Lambeth Walk must be the most famous street in Lambeth. It's probably more famous than Lambeth itself, in fact. But what do you actually know about the street? Well, I recently had the opportunity to take a stroll up there. So let's have a look. Let's do the Lambeth Walk. The northern end is a short stroll from Lambeth North Tube Station. The south is near-ish to Vauxhall, but not super near. The logical place to start, I would say, is the northern end. I started at the southern end. At the risk of leaving myself open to all sorts of angry and possibly misspelt comments, the street itself is not much to look at. For this, I blame Hitler. The street is quite a venerable one, and you'll see some of the old 19th century buildings as we progress. It used to be a very lively place, with a popular street market from the 1860s, if not earlier, but much of that got flattened during the Second World War. Only half the original number of houses were built to replace those that were bombed, and the heart of the street was lost. By the 1930s, the market had already been in decline for a long time. Historically, this was a very working-class area with a lot of industry. The street was noted in the 19th century for its poverty. The street had several pawnbrokers and cheap lodging houses, and the market was well known as a place for inexpensive goods. Nevertheless, the area was generally characterised as being very cheerful, a very fun place to go. If you're not local, you've probably heard of the street thanks to the song. Now, there's actually been two songs entitled The Lambeth Walk. One was written in 1899 by the music hall singer and boxer Alec Hurley, and was a celebration of the local area. It talks of pearly kings and queens, fish and chips, round guys, whatever they are, costas, and introduced me to my favourite term for a beer, a pint of moisture. This was overtaken in popularity in 1937 by a version by Duke Ellington, written for the musical Me and My Girl. That's probably the version you're familiar with. I don't know if Ellington ever actually visited Lambeth, but I'm going to go ahead and say no. The lyrics don't really have much to say about Lambeth, beyond the fact that you can go there and do the Lambeth walk. No costas, fried fish, pearly queens, feathers in hats, or pints of moisture. I'll link to a version in the description below. Despite this lack of local colour, the song became a sensation. The Lambeth Walk itself is a kind of sauntering, simple dance, easy to pick up, perfect for a good old Cockney knees up. Now, I mentioned that the street was bombed during the Blitz. This may or may not have been the culmination of a vendetta between Hitler and the song. The Lambeth Walk was banned in Germany, possibly because it was British? Possibly because the composer was black, possibly because the Nazis were quite boring people in terms of their artistic tastes. Hitler's opinion probably wasn't helped by a 1941 propaganda film in which he and his armies were depicted dancing to the tune. I'll uh, put a link to that one as well. Charles Ridley, the filmmaker, was put on the Nazis' death list because some people just can't take a joke. Following the war came slum clearances. Many of the old residents were moved out. The cohesiveness of the community was dealt a major blow. The hoped-for regeneration of the 60s didn't really do much for that, and the place never quite regained its old spirit. Of course, if you want to visit, you still can. There are still a few remnants of the old days, as you can see from this video. And then when you hear the song, you can nod sagely and say, Ah yes. I've done the Lambeth Walk. Hello all. I hope you enjoyed this trip along the street from the song, or songs. If you did, then please do consider leaving a like and subscribing for more. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio.